All right, here's a photo of my main test setup. I tested a number of components for this series of videos. And instead of a basically oscillator high voltage board, I needed something more in the range of normal AC and lower voltage DC, but higher DC than you would get in a 12 volt power supply. So here again is the B&K 1653 it's a isolation transformer and a variac i will explain what a variac is in this video and how to build your own box that does the same thing as this notice the oscilloscope over here is tied into the circuit that i'm testing these are diac and sidac circuits they are on separate videos here is my little rectification filter board and notice the little red neon lamp. Here's the load lamp I talked about before. Load lamp plugs into the B and K AC box and it comes out to the power supply board. What you're looking at here is a combination variable transformer and isolation transformer because this is a 120 volt circuit and you're connecting an oscilloscope to it it is vital you use an isolation transformer which this supplies along with a variable voltage adjust uh, to keep from damaging your test equipment if you get the if you get a hot ground mixed up into your oscilloscope ground it's going to damage your equipment go a little further down this is a, what I call my load lamp. There is a small light bulb in series with the power input to my uh, voltage generator board. This is like it's a current it's a quick and dirty current limiter because because if I short something out, all I'm going to do is light up the light bulb. I'm not going to blow up anything, blow any fuses, damage my variac or anything else. So, if you're going to do these kinds of experiments off a 120 volt line, get an isolation transformer and use a load lamp. I'll, I'll put that in the schematic if you're curious. Alright, here is the schematic if you want to build your own. You would have to buy a separate 120 volt AC isolation transformer if you're on 220 overseas outside the United States you would have it would be wise to get one that steps it down to 120 AC this device here is called a uh, we call it a variac or a variable transformer this transformer yes it's a transformer has a single winding so in that respect there is no isolation from the hot side of the power line which is why you use a isolation transformer and you can move this connection up and down it does it can be a step down if you look here at the point of 120 moving the slider below the 120 makes it a step down then you could uh, go above here it will step up it's also known as an auto transformer um, it's the phase and voltage relationships are somewhat complex but its use is straightforward the slider moves up and down below this point is a step down above this point is a step up you could have connected the 120 up here and it would have been a total step down all right also the little board here contains the uh, bridge rectifier this is a surge thermistor you could use a probably a 10 ohm 5 watt resistor or something like that these surge thermistors are used that when you uh, cut the power on you will create a real rush of current to charge up this output capacitor this will blunt that that will blunt that current surge when it first turns on charging the capacitor and it helps protect your diodes and so forth 
you can connect your voltmeter on the AC readings here to read whatever you're adjusting. Here is the NE2 lamp through a 100K resistor. That's the little red indicator. That tells me I've got over 70 volts and the voltage is high. Is uh, high enough to get a shock. It's just an indicator. And, I'll, and here's my output filter capacitor. Uh, this is not cr this is not critical. Probably the larger the better. But don't get ridiculous with it. Here's a closer view from a manufacturer spec sheet. I have one of these uh, variacs, by the way, or variable transformers. You can see where the slider slides along the coil on the back side of the device. It looks like a big round. It's round, it's heavy, it's got iron in it. It's still a transformer, either though it has one winding. Your four, pin 4, of course, would be common. 3 would be your slider. And you could put your uh, hot in either at this point on 2 or 1. And I used uh, 2. I built my own box, like, and I'll show you how to build one as well. Here's an inside look of the B&K box. Isolation transformer, vari variable transformer. You see what it looks like now. Uh, plus a board to read current and voltage, on-off switch, and so forth. This isolates you from the hot side of the power line. I'll show you momentarily why you need to do this. Here's a front v uh, panel view. Here's... Oh, by the way, I've had this, I bought this thing in the early 1980s, so it's decades old, but it works as good as the day I got it. Here's a closer look again. Here is my other Variac. I own two of these separately, plus another complete Variac unit with no isolation transformer. All right, let's talk about why I would want to use this thing. This comes from the... Uh, manual for the model 1653 it was put out by b and k instruments they sold a lot of test equipment for service technicians and let's let's look at the drawing here you have a couple of problems with power supplies a lot later on in the latter days of television they did away with the input power transformers because they were heavy, they were expensive, they were trying to reduce the cost. Transformers are expensive. So what they did was sort of what you're seeing in this picture. They would rectify it, filter it, just like I did in mine back there after the uh, Variac. And you could end up with a chassis that was hot, particularly sometimes... If the, if the two-prong plug got turned around or various other things, put it like this. You connect your oscilloscope to a hot chassis, you will wreck your equipment, particularly if it's plugged in. You could also have a chance of shock. You could brush your hand against the metal, the uh, metal frame or something and get across something else, and you can get shocked. What this does internally in the box, and you can build your own, is you have an auto transformer, the isolation transformer, that plugs into the wall. You plug the device you're servicing into the output plug, 0 to 150 volts, mine 0 to 140. There are two models. I have the 53. They're also including the 55. Okay, this eliminates the hot chassis shock problem. But it also is handy in troubleshooting and creating a variable DC power supply. Or it can just act as a plain old isolation transformer. Here's your television chassis. You can sometimes connect the earth ground to the chassis if you want to. I never did. I always used it through the isolation transformer when I did troubleshooting. All right, another reason to use this, this is, a, this is the uh, 1655 model, a little different than mine, um, is for troubleshooting. 
All right, you plug a device into the wall. Uh, you put in the fuses, bang, they blow. Okay, what's blown? Okay, you might check the power input fuses and the obvious stuff, and no, the diodes and that stuff might be good, but the fuse is still blowing. The advantage of using this variable AC power supply is you can plug in the device, you can check, you can bring the voltage up gradually. You could use a multimeter connected to different parts of the circuits to gradually bring this up. Okay, say these three, one of these three sub circuits has a dead short or isn't working. I can start bringing this up slowly. I can read my meter here. Or I could read the amp meter over here, and if you're ter barely turning it and the meter is just shooting right up, you got a dead short. You have a big problem. Then you can go in and start isolating stuff. You disc in televisions, what usually went out as far as high voltage items was the power supply, the flyback transformer or associated parts or the uh, horizontal output transistor and you disconnect the vitamins one at a time and bring the voltage up if you disconnect say piece uh, item number two and you're bringing it up and it's not uh, the current's not shooting through the roof you've partly isolated your fault all right, here's the inside view of my particular unit. It is not complex. You just got a fuse holder, isolation transformer, a little board that runs the meter, and the auto transformer itself. All right, here's a blow up of an auto transformer, a picture of one. They're all, they're all basically the same. You just have to look at the voltage readings. Mine, of course, are 0 to 130, 140 because I'm in the U.S. If you're overseas where they use 220 or whatever, you're going to run into models that probably are 0 to 220 or 250 or so. How much do these cost? Okay, you can buy these. I went over to Google. I put in Variac images and you can flip through, see what's for sale. This particular one here is there. I found a couple of models for less than $60 from our friends in China. And uh, they, they come with a case. They have a little amp meter if you need. They have a volt. I guess that's a volt meter. In this case, you can use the volt meter, 10 amp fuse, and a single three prong outlet. Um, okay, note that this by itself is not an isolation transformer. This is an auto transformer. It does not protect you from the hot side of the power line. Here is another model that I found and I removed the P uh, manufacturer's names. I am not here selling for anybody. I have no financial interest in this. This is another model you can get, and this one's between $50 and $60 as well. There's several available out there. Or you can go absolutely bonkers. You can spend $829, $1,064. These are just some of the prices when you get up into in big industrial units. Yeah, they're expensive. And you got a number of these down here. This one's a 500 watt, I think. And you see the various different types. Again, you can build your own based on my schematic that I showed you earlier. But you still need to buy an isolation transformer. These are easily available. Um, some of them are 220 to 110 step-down transformers. Those will work. And here's a number of them and their prices depending on how big they are. You could build that box there that I had eh, for less than $100 if you wanted to just build one. So again, here is my schematic. You'd have to have a fuse holder, an isolation transformer, buy one of the auto, auto transformers, and connect it to the uh, 
isolation transformer you need a diode bridge some kind of little surge resistor thermistor or resistor an indicator light connections for a voltmeter if you have a panel type amps or voltmeters you want to insert that would be great and here's your output if you're assuming 0 through 140 volts AC once it is rectified and filtered you can get from 0 to 185 volts DC so I hope this was uh, useful since I'm getting into a series of videos that's using higher voltage circuits and I'm having to get beyond batteries and wall warts and you may have a power supply like this in your community college uh, lab possibly but if not, you can build your own. It's simple. It's not hard to do. Anyway, appreciate you listening to this. Be sure to hit the like, leave a comment, and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.